Here's an exponential growth example where we aren't explicitly given the growth rate. Instead, we're given data that we can use to estimate the growth rate. We're given carbon dioxide emissions in the year 1990, and we're given the emissions in the year 2000. If we let 1990 correspond to year zero, the emissions measured in millions of tons were 962 that year. Then 10 years later, in 2000, the emissions were 1182 million metric tons. With this information, we have enough to find the growth rate. Remember that the general exponential model looks like this. The amount in year t is the initial amount times one plus r raised to the power t. With these two pieces of information, we can fill everything in except for r and then solve for that missing piece. If year zero is 1990, the amount or the population at year zero is 962. And then when t is 10, p is 1182. Filling in all those pieces, again, we notice that r is the only unknown, and we can solve for that. To do so, I want to get r by itself, and I start by dividing both sides by 962. Once I divide that out, I'll just have 1 plus r to the 10th on the right side. Dividing 1182 by 962, we get 1.228, etc. Now, to keep solving for r, I need to get rid of this 10th power. So if I take the 10th root of both sides, I will undo that 10th power, leaving just 1 plus r. That means I need to take the 10th root of this answer. In the TI-83, I can do this a couple of ways. I can go under the math menu and find the general root button, which is number five. To use that, I type in 10 for the root, go to the math menu, go down to number five, or press the five key, and then enter the number that I want to take the 10th root of, which is my previous answer. The other way to do this is to raise that answer to the one-tenth power. Raising something to the one-tenth power and taking the 10th root are the same thing. In any case, this number equals one plus r. Finally then, to find r, just subtract one from that answer, and r then is 0 0.0208, or 2.08%. Once we have that, we can fill in the full exponential model for this problem. Here's the full model, where p sub zero is 962, because that's the amount in 1990, which we've taken as our year zero. R is filled in with the value that we found, and now we can plug in any value for T and predict what the emissions will be in that year. We want to predict what will happen in 2050, which is 60 years after our year zero. So let T equal 60, and we can predict what the emissions will be in that year. According to this model, we predict that the emissions in 2050 will hit about 3,300 million metric tons.